This weather video is driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, and 802 Honda. They're all located off of X7 on Interstate 89. Looking at the various components here, and precipitable water is one to look at. Jet stream, extremely strong, blowing in across the country, and this is what's making for a very active weather pattern. Current sea ice and snow situation. Our very active weather pattern, uh, jet stream energy barrels across the northern tier of the United States. Arctic air pushes in on gusty northwest winds, uh, especially late in the day on Thursday and through Thursday night. Brief, good, but super cold project weather day on Friday. The flow of loft will switch back to more southwesterly ahead of a Great Lakes storm system working in toward our region. This will start to bring snow and freezing rain transition, followed by gusty northwesterly winds and modified Arctic air. Settled weather finally returns as an area of higher pressure builds in across the region for the early to mid part of next week. You can see some pretty cold temperatures swinging around this uh, upper level low. This, by the way, is a piece of the polar vortex, uh, in southern portions of Hudson Bay. You can see the ambient air temperature is all below zero, working your way across the region here. Now, looking at uh, wind chills, this is going to be a very big issue as we get into basically Thursday late in the day into Thursday night, as we have some pretty strong gusty winds associated with a weather system on the back side and an Arctic front that will then drop on through. You're looking at the European models, uh, six hourly panels. You can see, first of all, the uh, thicknesses here. This is where it's warm enough to rain, cold enough to snow, and indeed lake effect snow downwind of the Great Lakes. That's what these streamers are. And indeed this is this morning's. So running the uh, six hourly panels here, this is a uh, valid uh, one o'clock this afternoon. Then we have a dry afternoon. Then more lake effect streamers get into Vermont, you can see. And continuing that, we get into a little bit of uh, lighter snow in the afternoon tomorrow, but some snow squalls. And then we have this Arctic front. It's kind of hard to see here, but this is an Arctic front right here with this little area of low pressure, 1,005 millibar, and then that Arctic front blowing on through. It's on the back side of the system. That's going to make uh, all the difference here. So just running that one more time here. Finally, high pressure builds in and uh, should give us a decent project weather day on Friday. Beyond that, that area of higher pressure pushes on out very quickly, overrunning precipitation. Warm air, overrunning colder air trapped at the surface is going to deliver some snow. Watching that. And it looks like uh, you can see the uh, thickness lines here. It's warm enough to rain with a messy mixed precipitation type after what could be some several inches of snow, especially southern Vermont, perhaps into central Vermont, a little less and a little bit more fluffy up in the northern Vermont, but eventually even there, we're looking at uh, precipitation types that'll be actually warm enough to cause uh, rainfall. Now, thereafter, you can see how this uh, moves in. We have uh, another big shot of colder air working on in. And then finally, this will set the stage for an area of higher pressure building in and some settled weather finally as we head into Monday, Tuesday, and likely even into Wednesday next week. GFS Ensemble uh, model plumes, so you can see where it's, uh, we're getting a little bit of snow this morning. A little break in the action, more snow showers or snows uh, come in, and then that uh, eventually that weekend storm where it's warm enough to rain. One little whisker here showing freezing rain possibilities. And uh, again, this is centered on Burlington, Vermont, and then thereafter, colder air works on in. GFS, uh, again, situated on Burlington, Vermont. You can see where temperatures fall below zero here for Thursday night, Friday morning. Make a rise back, try to come back uh, fairly cold. Fairly good modeling, though, as you see the uh, the plumes here are fairly close together, and that's good. You can see where here they separate, for example. That's one indication of uh, where the models become a little bit unhinged. However, you can see these temperatures go up toward 32 and even 35 degrees, and indeed, that's what's going to take place with the rainfall event over the weekend. Precipitation accumulated over the next seven days indicated about 1.5 inches east of the Great Lakes, about one inch here. This is the uh, 0 0.50 line, so about a half inch precip to about an inch. Uh, again, parts of uh, southern Vermont a little more favored, a little wetter.
And you're looking at uh, the cold, cold temperatures here, running around, uh, what, minus uh, 9 to minus 12 degrees below normal. And about three days later, not quite as bad as we get into a little more of a warm-up over the weekend. This is our wind gust situation uh, over time. And we get into Thursday morning. This is about uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. And then you can see a lot of reds here, a lot of jet stream energy. And uh, in the higher elevations, this starts to show up at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then you can see there, and it's a little bit more favored for southern Vermont. And then we're out of it by uh, 7 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Now, coincident to that, looking at the wind chills, let's just run that a little bit ahead here. So here's our increasing wind chills. This is valid uh, again Thursday evening at about 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then you can see those wind chills there, minus 30 degrees at uh, Morrisville Stowe Airport. This is valid about 1 o'clock in the morning, early Friday morning. And then early, uh, Friday morning at about 7 o'clock in the morning, the wind chills come down a little bit because the winds fall off. But we're looking at ambient air temperatures that are pretty cold. And you can see at that point in time on Friday morning, those temperatures are below zero here. Now they warm up decently um, into the single digits above zero by Friday afternoon. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.